Welcome back to Fuels Cast, a podcast by Mansfield Energy. I'm your host, Sydney Casey, and today we're diving into an important and timely topic how businesses can be prepared for the peak of the 2024 hurricane season. As we've seen in recent years, hurricanes threaten safety and can disrupt supply chains, particularly for those reliant on fuel. This year's hurricane season is projected to be an active one, and it's critical for businesses to have a solid plan in place to secure fuel, maintain operations, and manage potential supply chain disruptions. In this episode, we'll be speaking with Scott Standifer, manager of our emergency response program here at Mansfield, who specializes in emergency response planning and fuel supply logistics. Scott will share insights on how to prepare your business, safeguard fuel supplies, and ensure business continuity even when natural disasters strike. We are back with another episode of Fuels Cast. Today we're going to be talking about emergency response and Scott Standifer is in the building. Scott is our manager of the emergency response program. Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I have been with Mansfield uh, plus some and, and other industry aspects for six or seven years now. I've spent all of that time in, in the what we'd call the LTL space which is going to be really anything that's not a transport, an FTL truck. Um, when people think about the, the fuel world, they often think about the transports because they see them driving down the road. Um, but you see less of the, the LTL trucks. They're <clears throat> straight trucks. They're smaller, deliver about 4,000 gallons instead of seven or eight, which is what you see on the, the transports. Um, but in that in that LTL world, we I've had my hands in, in, in trains, over the water fueling, generators of all shapes and sizes, overnight fleet fueling, um, really, really, really any fuel application that's not a big tank taking a big truck uh, is where I cut my teeth. And then uh, more recently here, jumped over to the emergency response side, which plays really hand in hand with the LTL space again, kind of in that specialty fueling. Um, and uh, it's been fun. It's been a uh, it's been uh, luckily a little bit of a quiet year on the hurricane front, um, but there's certainly more to it than just hurricanes. I think that's where we're focusing our conversation today. We're, we're about peak season, um, but happy to be here. Um, I certainly don't know everything, but I think I've been around enough to know a little bit. Yeah. So happy to have you. You said we're in the peak of hurricane season right now, but it's a sunny day here in Gainesville, Georgia, a little bit cloudy, but... With that being said, we've seen a couple hurricanes come through already. Walk us through what hurricane season so far has looked like and what we could be looking forward to in the next few months. Yeah. Um, the experts, the experts have uh, have told us that, or they did tell us in the spring that it was supposed to be expected to be a, a historic hurricane season. Very busy. Um, and in some ways that's proven to be true. In other ways, we, we haven't quite seen that yet. Um, just a week ago, there were, uh, I think, five different systems that were potential to form. Um, only one real strong system developed out of that and was named Gordon. But with it forming fairly early, it, it tailed up and back out into the ocean. Um, so it didn't really come of anything for the United States. Um, but I mean, right now there's two blips out there that we're watching that, that have the potential to turn into something. Uh, we've had two storms hit hit the US where, where we've activated dedicated assets for, for certain customers. Um, and, and on top of that, you know, the, the aspect of it being historic, this is the the earliest we've seen a cap four uh, in, in U.S. history, and so it quite it hasn't been historic in volume quite yet. Although we're only really halfway through, um, there's certainly still plenty of opportunity for for storms to come in, and, and often you do tend to see some come late. Uh, but we have seen a historic season, and the strength of the storms that we have seen ramping up fairly quickly, uh, more at least quicker than usual. And so right now it's not too bad. We haven't seen too much. Uh, too much strength, too much hurricanes. Uh, we've been lucky, uh, but not without not you know not without nothing. Um, Burl down in Houston certainly was a, a big impact that that put 
uh, something like 2 million without power. And that was a long crawl back up. Um, and then uh, we had the one just a couple weeks ago down in Louisiana, uh, Francine. Yep. And so uh, making our way through the season, um, luckily for, for everyone, uh, we, we, we certainly don't enjoy hurricanes. We, we're not in the emergency response space uh, because, because uh, we, we want to be per se. Um, you know, ideally there are no hurricanes, but we were ready when there are. Now, Francine, when it came through, you said it hit Louisiana and it hit as a category two. And I know it took a lot of production facilities down in Gulf of Mexico. Are we still seeing any remnants from that or on your front? Are we pretty in the clear? Yeah, uh, from my side, we're, we're cleared up. Um, we'll, we'll have to bounce back to your, your first episode and talk to Andy on the details of the, the supply side. But um, that, that didn't have too much impact. We did have a, we did have some some activation for some customers in that. Um, but it was fairly, uh, fairly calm, all things considered. Uh, it, it hit as a cat two, but ramped down very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was, it was a category two for all but 10 seconds. Um, and then it died down pretty quickly. Um, I mean, but it, it's a great reminder that 50% of the U S refining capacity sits right there in that Gulf kind of in Louisiana to, to Houston area. And so whether that, whether that hurricane is impacting you physically or not, if you're if you're a company that operates in Middle Tennessee, um, you know it's something that you've got to keep an eye on because if something comes and hits, if current hur hurricane comes and hits, uh, it and, and impacts that supply piece, it, it certainly could impact you as a company in Middle Tennessee, right? So uh, it's something that we talk about often with customers. Is say, oh, you know, we're not in the we're not in the the hurricane belt, if you will, on the coast or in the Gulf, um, and, and that might be true, but that supply piece with 50% of the U.S. refining capacity sitting in the Gulf. It's something to keep an eye on. And you mentioned earlier, there's two disturbances out in the ocean right now that we're kind of monitoring both of them, a less than 50% chance of forming into a major hurricane or anything like that. Uh, aside from those two disturbances, is there anything else brewing or that you've got your eyes on from an emergency response perspective that customers should be aware of? No, no, I wouldn't say. I mean, there's always the possibility of, of something right now. Um, right now, data centers are a big conversation in the industry as those data centers are, are growing. Um, they're, they're realizing that they need to have some backup plans for the fuel. Uh, and there are certainly other other types of natural disasters. You look at fires out in the West Coast or tor tornadoes in, in the tornado alley. Um, U.S. Is, is, is special on the tornado front. Um but I mean, outside of outside of those, um, there's nothing nothing atypical brewing out there. Um, you know, as we approach winter, that becomes a little bit of conversation. As winter storm planning is always um, a, a, another conversation. It's 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 an interesting one. Um, driving, uh, you know, pulling assets and trucks and drivers and supply down into a hurricane, or even the aftermath of a tornado is one thing, but the winter storm planning takes a little bit of extra planning. Um, and so if you're a customer with, imp with exposure there, you know, you, you need to be, you need to be thinking about that. Um, cause it's certainly one that you, you've, you've got to plan for. Which is really the, the basis of, of, of all of our programming. It's not just hopeful, right? Or right. uh, that's the goal is to put a plan together and the, for the plan to work. And so all of our, all of our emergency response plans are just that their conversations with our customers, figuring out where their exposures are, what are the risks, what do they need in an event? Uh, and then let's put a plan together to make it happen. So let's walk through what that might look like for customers who may not have a plan in place. Where do you start that conversation of helping them figure out what they need to do to get a plan in place and how involved are we in that conversation? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would say step one is to, to have a BCP in general, a uh, business continuity plan. Um, whether it's fuel, personnel, data integrity, having having a robust BCP is, is step one. Um, if your business needs diesel fuel to run, having a, a plan around that fuel is... It lives within the BCP, but the, the BCP, the business continuity plan for your business is step one. Mansfield, I know we have a, a robust BCP 
that sits kind of famously in a red binder in the hands of all of our leadership. Uh, they sit, you know, we've got digital forms as well, but there's the, the physical just in case we need and we can't get to the digital. Uh, and there's big red binders at, at all of our senior leaders' desks that have um, the plans for fuel, for our personnel, for staffing, for buildings, for uh, backup data to, to make sure that we can keep our customers running. Um, within that, though, you know, that's overarching. Please make sure that you're looking at BCPs for your business. But within the context for fuel, I tend to see, I tend to see three drivers uh, on the emergency front. There's generator power, uh, and that can be as simple as you have a warehouse that you need to keep the lights on, or as complex as data centers where you've got an enormous amount of generators consuming an enormous amount of power and diesel. Uh, the next is uh, employee support. We do a lot of dedicated fueling for customers' employees. So we'll come out with a truck uh, and bring a uh, truck of gas and keep their employees away from gas stations and focused on you know their, their lives and subsequently the business. Um, I, I really love that offering. Um, and I think that it's super valuable for, for a couple reasons. One is in an emergency situation, if we're going to highlight hurricanes, um, one, we don't know if those gas stations have product. And two, those gas stations get really crazy really fast. And so I frankly, as a, you know, as, as a business would encourage you to just keep your employees away from those gas stations and get them, we'll, we'll bring the gas to you. Uh, we'll guarantee it. We'll be there for you. It keeps your, your employees away from those crazy gas stations safe. Uh, and again, focused on, you know, their families and, and, and the business that you guys are trying to execute. Uh, and then the the third, so you've got the generators, the the employee fueling, and the third is just the general business needs, um, or I'll, I'll, call, I'll, I'll call fleet use as well. Um, in most instances, it's some sort of fleet. And that's um, that's just the guarantee of, hey, we're going to have a truck and a driver available for you, um, most likely burning diesel and or gas, um, and we're going we're gonna to have that product there ready for your fleet to rock and roll. Um, we're, we're typically finding the need for the that what I'll call a dedicated asset when that business has some sort of ramp up as an event is happening, or they just need that fuel because going down isn't an option. So how is it that we or you can guarantee to a customer, let's say in Florida, a hurricane just hit them, they can't get their operations out on the road. How is it that we can guarantee that we could have them fueled? How do we get a truck there? Yeah. In that instance. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, 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 before I answer that question, I do like to say, you know, something that I love about Mansfield, and this predates me, because uh, it's really the, the anchor of our business is we, we, we build relationships that matter. And we've built a, a carrier network that we call the D1 network um, that, that we partner with, and they do a bang up job. Um, and so on the emergency planning front, really step one for Mansfield is we're going to do everything we can to not activate that dedicated asset through the the linked network of our partners. Um, and, and we've seen, I've seen that this year. There've been a couple customers that we, we have dedicated asset programs with, but because our D1 network, kind of on what I'll call the routine business, has performed so well, we didn't need to, to activate that dedicated asset because um, you know the teams that are in place that are running the business day to day did such a bang up job. Um, but when the going gets tough, uh, the tough get going. And what we do is we bring in um, trucks and drivers from out of market because those those drivers that are in market, those companies that are running are either one dealing with the disaster themselves. You know, their their cat muffins is in the backyard running free because their their door got ripped off and they've got to go get muffins um, or just elevated demand in that market has has eaten up any spare capacity that that local provider had. And so we tend to bring trucks and drivers out of market into market so that we can guarantee that dedicated service uh, because they're not concerned with necessarily the, the other peaks in demand. So we're going to we're saying, hey, I've got a truck and driver coming out of Tennessee down to Florida and they're servicing you, Sydney, and that that's all they're doing. They're dedicated for you, to you, because you need that fuel to keep your business running, to keep your customers happy.
What do we do safety wise? Like if a hurricane comes through, when speeds are really heavy, the f- local carriers can't deliver the fuel because of regulations or safety measures. Yeah. How do we get somebody else in that same market to deliver? How is it safe for them? Or yeah. do we do anything special? Yes. Yeah, so we fill the tires with concrete. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, that, that's certainly an, a good question, and, and t- that tends to come in kind of prep and then post-storm. So there is a period that we will pull off the roads. Typically speaking, around 40 miles an hour is where tank wagons are going to have to pull off the road mm-hmm. uh, because it becomes dangerous. And so whether that's with the local network or with the dedicated asset that we bring in pre-storm, we'll get that customer topped off, ready to go, and then we'll pull out uh, out of the path. Um wait for that storm to pass and then we're coming straight back in and then again, dedicated to their service once that storm's passed. And does that change depending on winter storm versus hurricane? It, absolutely. Um, winter storms are a fun one, but they, again, uh, just the, the ice conditions, the snow conditions, temperatures, um, they take their toll on drivers, roads, uh, equipment, the trucks themselves. Um, you've got to have some, some mindset there and, and some prepping on the equipment itself. But, as far as the the pre-storm, post-storm, uh, I, ice and snow do tend to require either one, a little bit more lead time, or sometimes in certain cases, we'll physically park trucks um, on site and leave them there for the, the period of time. Uh, if, it's, um, if it's a big enough risk exposure, we'll, we'll park trucks in that market so that there isn't that drive time. Uh, and then we can either have drivers there as well, um, or we can plan to fly those drivers in typically on a, on a private, private flight to get them in as quick as possible. Um, but to, to be, to, to be, to be totally candid, those get, those get expensive quick. Okay. Those get expensive quick. Um, uh, the, the cost difference on, you know, parking trucks and drivers versus, Hey, we're, we're going to come up, we're going to come from, you know, North Carolina and come down to, to, to uh, Florida for a couple of days, uh, is pretty substantial. Um, but, we certainly have customers where it's worthwhile. Um, that's that's the plan that they need in place, um, and and it's that that risk premium drives that decision for them. Yeah. So more often times than not, do you see that businesses already have some kind of business continuity plan or emergency plan in place, or are y'all coming in as the experts, guiding them through that process? <laughs> most of the time? It, it's a mix. Um, I would say default, most companies aren't thinking about fuel. They have BCPs for the core, you know, the core business functions, you know. Um, if, if I'm UPS, I've got BCPs that are thinking about packages, um, but diesel fuel or gasoline is not always top of mind. We do tend to find that there are a lot of in the moment requests that come in when customers realize, oh, my local provider can't can't service me the way that I need in this moment. Can, can I get help? Um, and we certainly do our best to, to get that help, but because we don't always have the local resources either, I might say, hey, I can help you, but it's going to be a 24 hour lead time, in which case it might be too late. And so we tend to do in the heat of the moment, we get requests. And then after the storms, years, a couple of years back, we had the big Texas freeze. Um, I mean, just a unprecedented, I will say, I hate to use that word, but mm-hmm. kind of unprecedented, mm-hmm. did a lot of damage, uh, both to, to, to individuals and to, to businesses. And that was a big one. We had a really strong kind of ripple effect of customers reaching out to us and saying, hey, how do we how do we not have this happen again? Um, but there on the flip of that, there are also companies, that I would say probably again, more on the data center side uh, that do tend to have a plan and they come in and they'll ask for RFPs or um, they'll ask for support in some sort of fashion. But most of the time, it's not a topic that's at the top of the business leader's mind, which is, which is fair. We, we get that, um, you know, to use UPS as an example, again, I don't know why I got UPS in the brain, but, uh, <laughs> I, must the I must, yeah, I must. The wife's got some packages on the way, but, um, you know, th- their, their job is to deliver packages. Right. And so, uh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock them for, for not thinking about fuel that that's why we're doing this, having this conversation, uh, hopefully to, 
to raise that question so they can consider, is this something we need to look at? Yeah. And I'm sure that some of our customers are in emergencies themselves. Like for instance, if a medical building were to go out, they have to go on a backup generator. That backup generator has to have fuel. So there's a fine line between a customer that like can operate for a little while without fuel and versus one that has to. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I say not, not on the emergency services side, it's not one size fits all. Uh, there are absolutely companies, you know, I think about, um, you know, mines and quarries. Um, there are companies that, that op operate mines and quarries along the coast and in Florida. And when a storm comes through, they, you know, they, they, they shut down and go home for a few days and then come back. Um, and there's not a huge risk or, or cost to the business on that. Or on the flip, you use, you use you know, medical centers and they actually have standards that they have to keep their gins and storage um, at certain levels. Um, and then there's, there's other companies uh, that will respond into an event, um, whether that's in, an, in a relief setting or some other form or fashion, but their, their business activity ramps up, in which case um, those, those are great applications for you probably ought to look at some sort of solution like a dedicated asset so that we can be there alongside with you, ramping your business and the, the fuels following you along the way. So it's, it's a mixed bag. There, there are certainly companies that the, the, the BCP around fuel is top off my bulk tank and I'll catch you in a few days. And that's the right plan. They don't need more than that. Um, and there are certainly other companies that, that, that need more than that. Um, whether that's dedicated storage, trucks and drivers, um, you've got to put some sort of plan together to ensure that they've got the fuel that they need to run their business. Mm -hmm. What does the flow of communication look like between the customer to, to us in these instances? Are we seeing customers call in way ahead of time? Let's say a hurricane's projected to come in tomorrow. Are they calling you today saying, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Or are we prepping weeks ahead of time? Yeah, uh, on a hurricane specifically, we tend to have a decent amount of lead time, maybe not weeks, but probably about a week. Um, you know, as we we all watch the systems that brew out in typically in the Atlantic Basin, there's there's some activity in the Pacific as well. Um, California had some impact with with, uh, I think, Hillary two years ago. Um, but we, we watch those and monitor those. Um, and and we're, we're certainly talking with the companies that we have contracts with. And we're saying, hey, we're watching this storm. Um, and, and there's there's a collaborative conversation there on whether or not we think that we need to be prepping for that or not. Um, this this last activation, we had probably probably three days heads up. We were down there ahead of time, backed out, came back in. Um, so it depends. But on the flip side of that, you know, you look at uh, tornadoes and, and there's no heads up. Um, it's just. It, that tornado is running, it's it's gone, and then we're we're coming in on after the fact. Um, and so it, it depends on the storm. Again, you know, ice is another one or, or winter storms. You tend to get a little bit of heads up on those. You can monitor those. Um, you know, everyone jokes that the weathermen are, are always wrong. Um, but you you can keep an eye on those and watch and plan and kind of take some take some preliminary steps to get things rolling, depending upon how that storm is ramping up or down. Right. So it's a very collaborative conversation. Um, when we see activity that we think has the possibility to become reality, we're reaching out to our customers that we have contracts with and saying, hey, we're watching this. Um, you know, we'll reach out over the next several days. Uh, feel free to relay your thoughts if you feel like you need support and you want to pull the trigger. We're here. We're going to be watching it. We'll reach out. And what are we doing to protect our customers' budgets in emergency time? I mean, some people are locked into a fuel price for a year, two years, whatever. Some people are not. They're buying every day based off of what the market's doing. But what are we doing in that instance to protect their their bottom line? Well, the beautiful the beautiful thing about the dedicated asset is while it's an insurance policy, you can budget for it. And so if you know that you have a need, um, again, whether that's hurricanes or tornadoes or, or, or something else, um, you can go lock that dedicated at truck and driver and budget that uh, on a month to month basis and know that it's there. Um, cover the labor costs and you've got that available for you. Um, you, you talk about the, the what we call fixed price, which is we're going to go lock with the market gallons for that customer at that price. Um, the, the, the beautiful thing about that is the budgeting side. Um, if you've got 
a reason to do that because of uh, costing and pricing that you you get for an end customer. Um, it's a great it's a great tool. Um, but the the interesting thing there is in a crisis, those gallons might be at the rack, but you may or may not have a truck and driver to get you that product, which is where the dedicated asset comes in. Um, and so we have customers that 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 have fixed price, but uh, it's it might be a challenge to get them the product, depending upon the severity of the situation. Right. We're talking emergencies, of course. Um, and then, I mean, from a product availability perspective, that's where, you know, our supply team does just an absolute lights out job. Um, the the amount being from the the LTL side of the business, I, I deal in, in little baby gallons uh, in most cases, but our supply team, they deal in barrels, um, which is uh, 42 gallons. I think that's right. We'll have to fact check that one. Oh, uh, you mean in a barrel? Yes. Oh, yes. In a barrel. That's to say they they're really good at what they do. They deal with a lot of volume um, and they've got a lot of different levers that they can pull um, to ensure that they're getting a, a good fair deal. Um, you know, we hold physical inventory positions, we have rack positions, then we've got contract gallons. Uh, we've got the wholesale, the wholesale piece of the business, which kind of ebbs and flows. Um, there, there's a lot of different levers that they pull to make sure that our customers have product and that it's fairly priced. Um, and, and the emergency business ties up with that supply group. Um, so it's 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 above my pay grade. Again, we'll have to bounce back to Andy on that one. Yeah. Uh, he's he is the supply wizard, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but they do they do a good job. They've never let me down. Um, so for all the businesses listening, potential customers maybe listening who do not have a plan in place and they need to start somewhere, what is their first step? What is the advice you would give them first step to start this process? Um, you know, I would look at, I would look at your business and kind of those three, those three areas and see and ask yourself, honestly, if there's exposure there. So that's, that's the generator power, uh, the employees, uh, which not all businesses have a bunch of employees that need to come to and from work. And then what I'll call the, the usual business fuel consumption or fleet consumption. I would start there. Um, because, I mean, some companies are going to run generators on their warehouses or their buildings, and the, those generators are, are serviced and fueled uh, by a generator company. Uh, and they may feel really secure in that fueling solution. And, you know, we're, we're happy for that. That's great. Um, they, may, they may not, in which case we're happy to help. And then, of course, there's the employee side of do you, do you, do you need people at the physical location? And if so, I would encourage you to consider the dedicated asset approach. Uh, and then lastly, or certainly not least, is just the, the typical business consumption on product. Um, do you need more volume? Do you need, are you going to burn more gallons in an, an emergency? Are you burn less gallons in an emergency? Uh, and asking those questions are going to start to clue you into whether or not we, there needs to be a conversation. Um, I mean, because we've got emergency contracts with... Um, all shapes and sizes of business, whether that's one truck and open source product or uh, 50 trucks and physically owned and stored product because they, they, they have to have that product available no matter what. And I'd say that's, that's another piece of the puzzle there is there's the, there's the truck and driver side and then there's the product side. Mansfield is really good. I just talked up our supply team. Um, they're really, really, really solid. But there are certain customers that say, we want physical gallons. And so they'll go, they'll go, we'll go buy storage and hold physical product for them so that that insurance policy is, is as ro robust as it can. They have dedicated gallons, they have dedicated drivers, they have dedicated trucks ready to go uh, when they need it. And are you or your team available if people were to want to talk through this or almost like a consultancy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we do. Um, we, we aim to, to, to ask those questions, um, to poke at our customers' businesses in an emergency setting um, so that we can help them understand what that looks like, right? And there are certainly conversations that we have where we're going to say, hey, we don't think that you need this. We don't think that it's worthwhile based on, based on these reasons. Um, and there's going to be instances where we're going to say, we really think that this would serve your business well. 
Um, you know, we'll be honest about that. Um, that's, that's one of our deals. We're transparent. Um, we're not out to get anyone. We're just trying to help our customers help their customers. Yeah. Help us help you. Yeah. Help, us help, help us help you. Well, Scott, thank you for being here with us today, providing your expertise surrounding hurricanes and emergency response. Hopefully, knock on wood, there are no more hurricanes this season, but we will see. The, the future is to be determined. Appreciate it. Hopefully, hopefully not more, but uh, we're ready if there are. All right. Well, you heard it, folks. We're ready if, if it comes. Thanks again to Scott for joining us today and for those emergency response tips on how to get ready for the hurricane season. If you're a business that relies on fuel, now is the time to start planning and ensure your operations are safeguarded during peak season. Stay tuned for more episodes where we continue to explore key issues impacting the fuel and energy sector. Until next time, bigger reach, broader solutions, better advice. Now you can.